So to Pastor's point, I have a special guest with us today. Maybe she's even familiar to you because she attends our church. Her name is Libby Wilson, and uh, and she is a CrossFit trainer. And you were also a certified. Uh, so so talk about your title. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm so I'm not a certified trainer. Okay. Um, I've been doing CrossFit for about. 10 or 11 years, I did I get didn't even certified. I know it's been around that long. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, gosh. So, uh, time flies. Yeah. <laughs> I was about 34 when I started. and yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I did have, um, I did go to training and I did get a CrossFit certification um, and it just expired last year. And at the time I just did it. Um, that's where my passions were. And I was doing some volunteer work with the 180 zone and it just yep. kind of God's timing, just kind of pieced together. And I was just had this nudge to just go ahead and do that training. So I did it. Like I said, it has expired. Um, who knows? I might do it again. It's, yeah. you know, but, uh, it's, it's been a fun ride. Awesome. Well, I wanted to bring you on because obviously we're going into a season where we always overeat and sit around way too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm guilty for mm-hmm, sure. Me too. And I love snacks and sweets. And I like to do the line backwards. You start at the snack table and work your way this way. Yeah. No. <laughs> but we're going into that season. And so I just wanted to bring you in and interview and talk to you. Like, how, how do we proportionalize our life in that way? What are some key things? That you guys have done because you and your husband i know i have a lot of respect for you guys and you guys just kind of set uh an example of a, ba- a more balanced life in in the area of motion and fitness and those things and that's one of our values here we want to launch people to new heights in the area of fitness so we have a fitness room that's free for people to use and it's got treadmills and ellipticals there's people here that can that's come awesome. alongside them and work out with them or help them help coach them um, and so we have people that um, have just been doing it, and we provide it for free because we believe if you're if you're not fit enough to do what God's called you to do, then we may not be able to f- completely fulfill our purpose. And so yeah. it, I, I think about Noah, and it's like, what if Noah was like the, a massive couch potato? <laughs> and God said, build a boat, dude. And he's like, are you kidding me? You know, I, I just think about that, and it's like, it, it would have probably been impossible for him to fulfill his I mission. I can't unsee that now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it's great. <laughs> but so I just wanted to pick your brain and get some input from you on, on kind of what you guys are doing and what your journeys looked like. Where did it start? Have you always been fit? Have you always been an athlete? All those types of things. Sure. And just kind of start at the beginning of your story. Yeah. Um, I mean, the question that stuck out there is, have you always been an athlete? No, no, absolutely not. Um, we were chatting a few minutes ago. I, was not an athletic kid. I didn't go out for a lot of sports. Um, I tried a couple and I didn't like them. And so I quit right away. And <laughs> I didn't know? like that discomfort that happens when we exercise. And um, so, no, I just, I never thought of myself in that light. Um, my f- fitness journey, if you want to call it that, probably started um, in college a little bit. And then I, I really got more serious about it in my mid 30s, like I said. Um, with a, a circuit class that you know started downtown Bettendorf, and then that gym turned into a CrossFit gym. Um, uh, but so yeah, so how I saw myself back then is much different than how I see myself now as a mm-hmm. middle-aged <laughs> mother of two college boys. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, that you know that's one of the things that um, movement and being physically healthy has done for me. So yeah. Um, you know, as far as, you know, how we started out, um, and habits we've set in our house, one with our boys, um, you know, from the get go, we always had healthy foods around. So it wasn't like, you know, when the boys were 10, I was like, we're going to start eating healthy. Not that you can't do that. I mean, that's, you know, yep. there's, there's always, there's always, um, a good day to, you know, start to, to start great new habits. But, um, for us, it was, um, kind of always around when they were little, when they were babies, um, so it was just a lot easier that way. Mm-hmm. And if you know, if someone's you know in a in a lifestyle where maybe they're looking around, thinking we're not eating super healthy, um, you know, and we still have room for improvement in our house as well, for sure. Um, baby steps, definitely. Um, just implementing you know fresh fruits and vegetables piece by piece um, gradually, mm-hmm. and not thinking that it's a change you need to make overnight because that's yeah. not realistic. Yeah. At all, but um, and as far as movement goes. Um, you know, I think what got me hooked on CrossFit was it was something that I loved and, and I would encourage anybody if they've got an interest in it, talk to me, um, reach out, I'll, I'll go with you. I'll introduce you to, and there's, we've got a lot of great CrossFit gyms in town 
if that's not your thing, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but find something that you love to do. Yeah. Um, whether it's dance or just lifting weights Yeah. or cranking on the tunes and doing some high intensity house cleaning, whatever it is. I'm serious. I mean, yeah. You know, at different stages of our lives, you know, movement means different things, but there's yep. always a place for it. Yeah. Dr. Ben Lerner wrote a book, Body by God. And in there, he talks about foods by God, motion by God, and he kind of goes through all the different steps and things um, that's essential to a healthy lifestyle. And uh, and that's what he said. Our bodies are made to move. Yeah. And when we quit moving, we stiffen up and we get sore muscles. You know, it was just, and I, I've seen it more and more now at 46 years old. I, I don't play basketball as much as I used to. And so mm-hmm. I'm not as flexible and I'm not as agile and it drives me crazy. Yeah. Cause my mind still thinks I can do it. And I'm sure many of you, your, your mind is still thinking that you can dunk a basketball or throw a, <laughs> a, a you know, a 50 yard touchdown throw, you know, yeah. whatever, but our bodies just, uh, boy, if we don't keep up with it, it seems like the law of thermo, the second law of thermodynamics kicks in yep. and our bodies just keep digressing. You know, one of my, um, and all of my grandparents were wonderful. I was blessed by by two sets of amazing grandparents um, who lived different lifestyles. And not that – so one one set, I'll start there, they they moved up until their 80s. They were very – had a routine, had a regimen. They met mm. their mall walker friends at the mall back – I mean, I used, they used to take us with them when we would spend the night and stuff. We'd <laughs> go to North Park Mall and, and meet the, the – purple haired mall walkers and we go to Hardee's <laughs> and get a biscuit after. Yeah. But you know, every, I don't know what time it was, I would say every morning at seven o'clock, they'd meet their buddies and they'd get their exercise and their movement in. And, um, my grandpa passed away, um, and really lived, you know, very healthy until he was in his late eighties. And my grandma passed away in her late nineties. Wow. Um, and, but every morning, even though she was in a nursing home for the last couple of years of her life, but she would get up, she would get dressed, she had a little, her little loafers on and her little slacks and blouse and a scarf. And, you know, no matter what her, there wasn't a lot on her schedule, but she would get up with purpose and with a tent and she would move. She would walk the hallways and she'd greet her friends and, you hmm. know, see who needed a hug that day or a pat on the shoulder. But um, two different lifestyles. My other set of grandparents weren't as mobile, as mobile, and they didn't move around as much. And their bodies just, as you said, they stiffened up and um, more aches and pains and a lot more, I got to sit down and rest. It's interesting just as you look at the different lifestyles. Um, and obviously there's genetic factors and different conditions and, you know, but mm-hmm. just as you just take that look at those two different scenarios, it's really inspired me to just, you know, I, that's, I want the one that, you know, that other set of grandparents showed me, keep moving, keep your body moving, keep stretching. I need to do better with that. I need to do better at my stretching and my mobility because, you know, I'm in my mid forties and, you know, things don't warm up and move quite the way they did 10 years ago. So, yeah, I think one of the things that you said, at least in my world is key because I'm not the type of guy that thinks, Oh, I just ran three miles. That was really fun. I hate running. And so, but if I'm chasing a basketball down a court, it's like, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And so I think yeah. it is finding what, what is the one thing that you enjoy doing, whether it's walking, whether it's running, whether it's swimming, whether it's riding a bicycle, yep. um, whatever it is to, to keep in motion. I think it's important to find that thing that, that connects with you. If you're a social person too, find a, it's easy. I know easier said than done, but find a buddy. Yeah. Seriously, find somebody and be intentional with it. And have the if you're more of a social person, then make it a social mm-hmm. situation. Go for a walk while you're talking. And as it yeah. gets cold, find a track, find a mall. You don't have to have equipment and and memberships necessarily, as as we know. But yeah. I think that's the times that I've found that our family's been the most consistent is when my wife has a buddy that she's going with, and she because she's very social, she wants to talk and she wants to enjoy other people's companies. Yeah. And so when she had that. Um, and now we live way out in the country, out in the sticks, so it's harder to find those connections where they're convenient. Um, and so you have to be very intentional with that time mm-hmm. to, to find somebody that you connect with and enjoy talking to and do uh, some exercises with, uh, I think is important. Yeah. And that's the times that we found that time it, flies been most when you're having consistent. fun. Yeah. yeah. One more, I, <laughs> so you're talking, I'm thinking about Steve, of like, I don't know. The boys were little, probably 10 years ago. He had, was to that point, I think we've all gotten to where you're like, oh, these pants are tight. And then you're <laughs> noticing it for a few weeks and turns into a couple months. And he was at the point where he's like, I got to do something. Yeah. And he's not a gym guy. He's, yep. he's, he's 
no, he's a laser focused guy, you know, um, just get the task done and, and move on. So that wasn't going to be a thing for him you know, as far as getting a gym membership. But we had a we and he got the, <laughs> the, the Just Dance game. Did yeah. you guys have that? Yes. Yeah. We have the we. We still have the we at home. My okay. kids still play it. The they bowling. still play it? Yeah. See, I was just going to say, get your Wii's out. But Steve, honest to God, he was he was intentional. <laughs> he knew what his, he yeah. wanted, the changes he wanted to make. And so, and he knew we would make fun of him if we saw him doing Just Dance. And so he came home a little, or he, he had, you know, he's self-employed. And so he worked out in his schedule. He would come home before the boys would get home from their <laughs> sporting events and and uh, sweat into the Wii. And he, he dropped, I don't remember, he lost like 20 pounds. Obviously he changed some eating habits too. Yeah. But um, that was, he, but he enjoyed it. Yep. So you're looking at him, you'd think he'd be a guy who'd like country western music or some hard rock. And he likes it, that like funky dance stuff, yeah. like that <laughs> disco stuff. And that yep. was what's on Just Dance. He had a blast with it. What yeah. I remember about the Wii is they had the Wii Fit. Mm -hmm. And I stepped on that thing. And it, you know, that little voice or whatever, the thing, it says, you are obese. Oh, that's and it started nice. going off. <laughs> it was like, how do they not offend half the world? Because yeah. I, I was pretty fit. I was still playing basketball all the time. <laughs> and I'm like, does it know I'm tall? You know, like, <laughs> is it taking into equation my body mass? You know, like my muscle, my my uh, bone density and all this stuff. And it was just like, you are obese. And I'm like, what in the world? You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Have talk. We. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So our sensitivity training. <laughs> yeah. It had none. So, nope. but so this year, obviously we're moving into new year. New year's resolutions are a big thing, which I, new year's resolutions, there's pros and cons. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it, usually you set them and you break them. But, and I, that's kind of Dr. Ben Lerner and all, a lot of the people that we followed in the past, their whole thing is slowly make the, the transition, yeah. make it a lifestyle instead of just a diet. Um, what are, how, what would you say to somebody that is, that maybe they're in a different phase of life and they found themselves kind of like, like Steve was, it's like, man, my pants are tighter or I'm, I'm completely out of shape. I feel defeated. Mm -hmm. uh, self-esteem's not there. The morale and the motivation's gone. What do you say to that person? I, I, be kind to yourself. Seriously, I think That's what good. I what I don't like about New Year's resolutions is um, they're so extreme. I mean, it's and I've done this to myself too. Um, even you know, as I backslid and I'm putting on more weight than I want, and it's oh Monday, Monday. I'm not eating any carbs. Uh, no more chocolate. Uh, I'm not going to eat past 6 p.m. I mean, all these rules, mm -hmm. and then it never works. Yeah. It just doesn't. Yeah. Um, it's mean. I mean, it's like pulling your kid's you know, phone away. Every fun thing that is like yanking and punishing, it's we don't want to – don't do that because mm -hmm. you want to be kind. So we you know, be kind to yourself. Um, give yourself some slack, right? So if, if you know, you're finding yourself in that place, um, take – pick out – you know, say I'm going to move for five minutes. Yeah. Tomorrow's, you know, a new day. Okay, January 1st, January 2nd, whatever. I'm going to move for five minutes. Mm -hmm. That's, a, I mean, that's, it's obtainable, right? Yeah. And in five minutes, I mean, you can, you can really um, get very uncomfortable in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I'm going to move for five minutes and maybe take away one thing that you know every time you pull up to that drive through and order that yeah. drink or, or one thing that, you know, you're grabbing for right before you go to bed, you know, like we all have those things we do, right? Where yep. you're like, this is not probably good for me. Um, Comfort Pick foods. one thing. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Pick pick out one movement and one, you know, thing you're reaching for for comfort that, that you know you don't need anymore. Just yep. one thing at a time. And what I found for myself is success kind of snowballs. So, I mean, you move for a few minutes and you realize it's really not a big deal. Like, I can mm -hmm. do this. I can do that again. Um, and you start feeling a little bit better, you know, just mainly because you're doing something that you set out to do and you're actually following through. That's a good feeling. That kind of snowballs, right? Yeah. And then maybe you, your pants are fitting a little bit tighter. You're whatever, you know, whatever gets you moving. But it's a, it's like a six, uh, success snowball and it. Mm -hmm. I think rolls into more and more. Okay, what's my next goal? Well, maybe I'll work out for ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe I'll, you know, I'll get a, you know, I quit eating ice cream before bed. Well, maybe I'll get a tall, you know, mochaccino instead of a a venti or whatever the case yeah. may be. So be kind, baby steps. 
Yep. One thing at a time. Like it's yeah. not going to, ha- you're not going to take all the things you love away in mm-hmm. one night. That's not realistic. The one thing that I noticed um, several years ago, after I quit playing basketball consistently because I was getting injuries and different, <coughs> different things, mm-hmm. um, I went through a season where I didn't work out at all and I found myself very unhappy yeah. and I hit an all time high weight and I was like, this has got to end. So it started for me with stretching. And so I just started stretching and then it went from stretching to maybe I should jump on the elliptical for 15 minutes before I stretch. So I'm warmer. Yeah. So then, then it became a thing. I started setting goals. Okay. I want a mile in this amount of time. Now, now I'm trying to compete and beat it. Um, I'm kind of a competitive person that way anyway, Mm -hmm. and then started stretching. And so it was for me, it was baby steps, but it became very consistent. That's your snowball. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And the other, the other thing I've found is it's very hard to get focused sometimes, but once you start something and you've been doing it for several minutes, it's easier to become focused, Yeah. even though you didn't start out focused. And so I think that's a key too, is you, you said something at the beginning about church. You said Steve and I just determined that Sundays share that with us. Yeah, I, and I was I can't remember which pastor it was, but one of our pastors over the <coughs> last twenty years or so said, you know, when you wake up on Sunday morning, don't decide or talk about are we going to church. You go to church. Sunday morning means you go to church. Mm-hmm. Don't discuss it because. Sometimes, a lot of times, you're probably going to talk yourself out of it because yeah. your house is so comfy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Cup of coffee is so comfy. Especially now with live stream. <laughs> Get off the couch and come, come to, to church. church. <laughs> yeah. So Sunday, you wake up, you go to church. That's just a decision you make at a time. Um, and I've done that for myself. You know, we, I, like I said, we did that with the kids and with our family for church. But I've done that for myself for my workouts is I wake up, I go get a workout in. And yeah, some mornings I wake up and, and I don't feel great. Uh, maybe I didn't eat very well the day before and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, too, uh, I just don't want to, you know, I'll, I've done it before too. It's not like I'm perfect and I always get up and go, but, um, the vast majority of the time it's a stop thinking all the negative thoughts that want to come into your head about how you don't feel like doing it or, or all the reasons, all the excuses you get up I go to the gym. Yep. I go to class. Um, just get it done. And, and by the time I get there, I'm fine. And mm-hmm. I think we've done that with church too. You know, yep. sometimes if you're, by the time, you know, you don't always feel like it, but once you get here, you're like, oh yeah. And then you walk out and you're like, thank God. Thank yeah. God we came. I needed yeah. to hear that. Yep. And I think that about the gym too. It's thank God I showed up. Yeah. I needed to get moving. And it's, it's, it's a mood booster for me, for sure. Just moving. Mm-hmm. Like you said, God made our bodies to move yep. and be functional. And yeah. when we don't, it, it doesn't feel good. Yeah. I, I mean, even when I take a few days off, um, I found it's better for me to move and do something every day because when I don't move at all for a couple of days, that's what makes me sore. Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've heard this, too, in some of the studies that I've read, that um, a workout can do more for your psyche than medication. And we're kind of coming out of, or I don't know what you want to call it with COVID, it seems like it's the ongoing thing now, but... Certainly, it seems like mental wellness is mm-hmm. kind of at an all-time low in America. And so I think it's important whether you're isolated at home, um, maybe you are at, at risk. There are certainly movements you can do at home. Definitely. And they're going to help your psyche as well. You know, it gets you out of that funk of depression. And mm-hmm. um, so I think, yeah, God made us to move and to be active. Right. So. Right. And if, you know, um, if I've invited a lot of friends to come to the gym to, with me and I don't, I don't get a lot of takers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think some people are, a lot of people are intimidated by CrossFit and I get it. Um, um, and I understand it. It is modifiable for everyone though. All ages, <laughs> all fitness levels. Let me give that plug. <laughs> but, um, I, if, if, you know, you are someone who's more comfortable, like Steve, it's yep. not his thing. We're all, we're all a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, there are so many movements you can do at home. Yep. And if anyone wanted, you know, any advice or help, and it sounds like you guys have some people, you know, ready to help. Um, but I'm always available too. If you have questions or want a couple movements that are easy to do body weight stuff, um, yeah. you can do at home just for, like I said, five minutes a day. Yep. Um, it's, 
it's meaningful and it will change how you feel. Like you said, it's in an immediate mood booster. The first, the worst part of my workout, um, and I tell me if you agree or disagree, but is like the first five minutes. Mm -hmm. That's the worst part. Yeah. It's when your body's getting used to that discomfort and then it's, it, it tends to plateau. That's the worst part of the basketball game for me when I played sports. The first few minutes of the game were the worst for yeah. me. And until you break that sweat mm -hmm. and you're really sweating and you're really, that, that's when I really got into the game. And but, I wonder sometimes if that's why people have, you know, why exercise gets such a bad rap because they're trying, <laughs> they're trying it for like five, 10 minutes. Yeah. Like, this is miserable. It is, <laughs> but it gets better. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. can promise. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And it, it, man, when you feel better and you can bend over without it hurting and, you know, I remember, uh, and I'll say this in closing, but my director, when I was a first year student in the Bible college thing that I went to called Master's Commission, my director, he was, I think he was 36 at the time. And he said, guys today, and he gathered all the interns together. He goes, guys today, we're going to help somebody in our church move. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. You know? And so all day long, we're moving furniture, and we're loading the U-Haul, and we're unloading the U-Haul, and we're carrying it upstairs and doing all this stuff. And the next morning at prayer, 6 a.m. prayer, he's like, I can't move. <laughs> and he was so sore. And he goes, I'm only 36, you know? Oh, and I wasn't a bit sore, you know? I'm like, that was great, you know? Yeah. And so he said, all right, from now on, it's prayer at 6. And then we're, there was a place called the Lord's Gym uh, right there in Columbus, Georgia, we would pack up in the church van and we'd go to the Lord's gym and we would work out because he said, I'm done being sore. Good for him. And, uh, and so, and he was a very fit looking man, but he just, you know, he, his muscles and stuff, you start losing muscle mass and, and things yeah. of that nature. And it's, uh, it's downhill from there. So let's, let's keep moving. Even if you're, maybe you're in a position where you feel like, man, it's, I'm just too far gone, man, pick up some little dumbbells, do something to move. Mm -hmm. um, you know, walk around the house or up and down the hallway or mow the yard with a push mower this week or uh, this week. It's 70 degrees out today, I but tomorrow is going to be 40. <laughs> hurry up. And, yeah. <laughs> hurry up. You can use a shovel and maybe <laughs> shovel the snow off your driveway because um, we're certainly going into winter. But we, we just want to encourage you and let you know that we're here as a resource. Libby, thank you for even uh, offering some advice to people. You'll see Libby. Um, she's part of a hospitality team. So Connect with Libby if you see her on a Sunday. She'd yes. love to help, and we have people here as well that can help, and we have the fitness center that's free for you. So if you need a key, the reason it's locked is because you just fill out a little form, and we give you a key, and you can come and work out. It's free of charge. So we're just trying to get people moving and, and get them healthier, and I understand the struggle because there's a struggle in our own home um, at, at getting fit and, and at, at doing this, and it's a constant battle. And, uh, but it's one worth winning, so keep fighting. Thanks for joining us for Pastor's Point. God bless you guys.